everybody, I'm Suzanne Barrett-Justice, and this is Singer, my boy. This is my standard poodle pup. He's nine months old, and in today's video, we're going to go ahead and paint this guy. Uh, we're just going to do a little headshot, and uh, you can see when you're looking at him on video, you probably have a hard time distinguishing his features, right? And that's kind of one of the challenges of painting a black dog, and one with curly hair, and... Uh, He's so sweet. He's just giving me kisses as we talk. He's just an awesome, awesome boy. And uh, so we're going to paint him today. So yeah, we're going to see how this goes. And uh, so again, thanks for joining me today. If you are my subscribers, thanks so much. If you're not, please consider subscribing. And uh, you know, if you like to see painting tutorials, uh, you know, real time painting tutorials, a little bit more detail than what you see here on YouTube, please check out my Patreon channel. And uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's go ahead and print this guy right here. This will be the photo reference we're gonna be working from to do Singer's portrait taken at home. I'm starting out this portrait just by doing a very loose uh, charcoal sketch, if you will, onto this uh, super smooth substrate. Now I'm using a gessoed panel that like, as I said, is super, super smooth. And the vine charcoal is probably not the best thing to use simply because it doesn't really stick, but it's giving me enough of a, you know, reference, if you will, to be able to see where I'm going to put my paint in this portrait. I did a very, very loose sketch with vine charcoal, and because I'm working on a super slick substrate, it's a you know it's a it's a nine by twelve gessoed panel, and so it's super super slick. Uh, you know what, vine does not work so well on that. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of get some bearings, just some area, because I can already tell I'm gonna have to fix some of the angles. I am going to do a very thin eh, underpainting, just using ivory black. Um, King's blue and white, and I may throw some ultramarine blue down too, because basically I have a blue dog. And Singer is, he's a good boy. He's a good boy and he's just gonna, you know what, he's nine months old and I felt like I wanted to do his portrait since he is now the official dog of the King of Suzanne Barrett Justice Fine Art Studio. So, you know, he, he deserves to have his portrait done. So that's what we're gonna do today. Using just a little bit of paint and a lot of uh, paint thinner, I am going in with an ivory, a number two ivory filbert. And I'm just kind of, eh, if in a sense, doing a value study. And I've only got a very limited palette at this point. So I'm just kind of eh, roughing it in to see where everything's going. And I will check my angles constantly with that brush. And that's what you see me doing when I'm just kind of laying my brush down, checking my angles against my reference photo to make sure that I'm on track and uh, yeah so I'm just making corrections as I go and I can see just by looking at this that there's a lot of corrections that will be made but don't worry I'll wrap this up and it'll be all right in the end.
with having a black dog, um, you're not going to have to use a lot of color, obviously. So I'm basically doing a value study, if you will, with just using the King's Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Black, and uh, White. So yeah, so that's what's happening here. And I'm just kind of laying down the shapes and I'm checking my references against, you know, I'm checking the angles of my reference on my painting against the actual reference photo that I'm using. So you know, I'm just, I'm constantly checking, constantly looking, constantly checking, constantly adjusting, if you will. I'm always, always tweaking a piece. Sometimes we gotta take a break from painting, don't we, Singer? Because we gotta get a walk on. You ready to go get your walk? You ready? Let's go do it. Let's go get our walk on. You want to? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, so here's, I will be pushing this out a little bit more, but the thing is, I gotta get my background color in. So I know that this kind of comes out a little bit. There's a lot of light hair that comes in here, and it's, Kind of flattens out here, comes up here. Yeah, this is looking right now. There's this, a lot of light hair here. And there's lots of stuff going on. So, it's like I see cerulean in here, believe it or not. We'll just put this in here for now. Kind of doing that value study. Right. I'm feeling better about everything. I'm feeling better about the placement. And I'm gonna go ahead and start doing some more of the darker values. He's got right up underneath his eye. It's just a Is his eye, you know, poodles have kind of all many eyes. So a lot of little. And he's got this dark value that kind of is the whole side of this. It goes up. And this kind of comes in. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm checking the angles of the eyes. We've kind of got them at this angle. Runs with it's. It's all making sense. Checking it here against the uh, actual reference, checking the angles, nostrils, eyes line up. So that's good. Nostrils, <laughs> nostrils and eyes line up. See, they're still, they're all on the same plane. And so we know we're kind of on the right track. Okay. So I need to kind of determine what my background's gonna be, you know, and uh, not really knowing yet what uh, I'm wanting to keep it um, um, I'm not sure I, I think it's gonna be dark I want it to be dramatic I'm not really sure yet about the color though so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this dark value here kind of comes out like this and then the distance here it's a little bit um, grayer 
And I'm going to go ahead and Singer just got his walk. He's feeling, he's trying to cool off. It's pretty warm and humid outside, but you know what? He's good for it. He's already had his walk this morning, so he's just kind of, he's trying to chill off. He's my good boy, Archie. He's a good boy. Better okay, get back. So I put more of the ivory black down, and by accident, I put vermilion down, but I really wanted the cadmium red, so that's why this is here. We'll just take this off and put it over here, so I really don't need it right there. So, the reason I like a little bit of the cad red into the black, it just livens it up a little bit. It makes it so it's not a flat black. And even though ivory black really isn't a flat black, this makes it even livelier. So, I'm going to go with a pretty dramatic background. And uh, so there we go. It, it looks black, but it's really an intense shade of cadmium. So that's where I'm going. And I'm going to go ahead and stop popping that background in a little bit. I'm just going to go with a soft brush. I'm going to use um, an ebony filbert. It happens to be uh, number eight. Looks like this. And ebony's are a natural hair brush. It will uh, let me do some soft. It'll allow me to be a little bit softer. What I wanted to show you is I want to go ahead and create that soft edge where his hair is puffy. You know, I don't want it to look, and it's really hard because I'm working around my, uh, oops, I'm getting a call. So I was actually struggling with the snows and I kept going, changing, altering, doing things differently. So eventually I just go ahead and grab uh, <laughs> my paint scraper. See, I can take off paint with that little paint scraper. It's almost like a magic eraser. And I can even create, you know, just that little fuzzy edge. I'm trying to really visualize against my reference, my photo reference, everything that goes into making singers portraits. So the paint scrapers are awesome and, and running that paintbrush and checking angles, another great tool. You know, paintbrushes are awesome. They're not just, they're not just for painting. They can check angles as well. So I'm, I'm you know, I, for whatever reason, normally I don't have problems with noses, but on this particular piece I did. I finally got it, but I, I did have to really work it.
he just he goes to the cabinet because he knows what's kept in the cabinet. What is it, Singer? What do you want? <coughs> you want treats? What? <coughs> uh, I think I know what you want. <coughs> Goodness gracious. <coughs> is that what you want? Would you like one of these? Is that what you want? Oh, get a sit. You got to sit. Here you go. He's such a diva. He says, if you're going to paint me, it ain't free. Okay, he's coming along slowly but surely. I'm getting him in. I want to go ahead and get this blocked, what I consider blocked in before I leave today so I can wrap this up tomorrow. So I want to get as much done. I mean, I've, I've still got a little bit of time today, but I want to take advantage of the wet edge. So I have to get all my wet edge stuff in basically means all the exterior part of the painting and uh, so I'm doing some of the broader strokes that I need and um, done. so we got this put a little bit of brown with that So we've got to get this and this kind of goes a little bit to the contour of his face. Little... I'm feeling like it's starting to look like my dog. I'm starting to feel it, but it's, it's taking me a while to get there. Okay, so now I need to soften these edges up. So, hmm. Going in with some blue around the edges here. I hit that a little bit, but then I want it just to almost disappear into that background. I need that soft edge. I come back and, and, and firm that edge up a little bit more. Now, I always have to keep in mind, I keep inching out and move, moving things around and rah, 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 and I only have, I always want to keep at least a quarter inch. Now, I'm getting close here. It's about a half inch, and I don't want to run his ear off <laughs> because I got I to gotta make room for frame, right? Okay, so we're going to just slightly... Push that around here because I don't want that to be very abrupt. Oops, I got a hair in there. That happens. There we go. Oops. There we go. And now he has some hair that's kind of coming out through here. I'm still building color and I would still consider this very much in the blocking end stage, but I'm stacking color and starting to actually get a feel of my dog. Um, so as I work around the edges and I'm just really getting to getting a feel, I don't really, I've not really put that much detail into anything yet. Obviously I haven't even gotten to the eyes and 
and of course everybody knows that's where the fun's at but i am just getting this in remember folks if you have any questions about anything you're seeing in the video just leave it in the comment section i'll get to you um i do feel like i have to apologize for this like intense glare because i work mainly in natural light that's the window beh that's behind me that is reflecting onto the actual substrate so i forgive me for that but so I am still creating soft edges where I can, and the, the paint of the background is still wet, and it's still allowing me to create those nice soft edges that I, I love, 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 love in a piece. And uh, I'm just moving through it and putting, you know, still, it's mainly value at this point. Again, one of the advantages of doing a black dog is you do have a limited palette, and that sometimes makes things easier. So what I'm going to use is an Eclipse pointed round. It's a number two, pretty small brush, and I want to get in there. Ah, doing the eyes, the, my favorite part of any portrait. And, you know, poodles have very dark eyes, or at least a black poodle does. <laughs> and so I'm just going into Singer's uh, eye area and I'm using just the very tip of that brush. So I'm trying to show you that I'm just loading that brush, just the very, very, very tip of a small pointed round. And uh, so it, it looks weird at first, but it will all make sense. I'm putting in all the different values and there's a lot of reflective light lots of reflective light even in those little dark eyes and the values might be pretty darn close to each other so you kind of have to get that part right so one of my favorite colors to use in mixing um, for a dark eye so it doesn't look black is the same as the background color which is a combination of cadmium red and ivory black and I might have added a little bit of white because there is that kind of eh, dull shine to that dark eye in this particular in this particular lighting situation. And I'm just moving across. Um, this is, you know, this is always the fun, crucial part for me in any painting is doing the eyes, and I have to get them right. Because Singer was right next to um, a window in our one of our sunrooms in our house, the there is that almost like a turquoisey, I guess, reflective light. That's I guess the sky color, and you can see the window pane. And you can see how I load that brush just like with a little wad, if you will, at the very end, just a little dollop of paint on the tip of my brush, and that's going to allow me to get in there and do some of the finer lines, like you see here. The, you know, as far as the sclera or the waterline on the eye. And I'm working it, working it, and then I keep tweaking back and forth through the dark values, you know, refining it. You'll see, I even do the little window pane 
in his eye because it's evident in the um, photo reference. And that's, you know what, that's what brings everything to life for me in a, in a portrait. And I go back in, kind of redo a little bit, because some of those whites do shine pretty bright. And you know what, I'll take contrast wherever I can get it. And in this case, it was, it was sort of important for me. Ah, my mall stick. This allows me to get in close, keeps my hand a little bit more steady. So I'm just, you know, I'm still tweaking along the way. This is not nearly complete. It may look like it is, but I'm still working out a lot of the angles and elongating some areas, refining others, and even adding lighter values where I need to. like this so you can see it so this is kind of where I am at this point and I am going to make a couple more adjustments and get closer to what I think it actually needs to be so we're getting we're moving through I I want his hair his top knot to show out but I want it to be proper so I'm going to work on that next When highlighting a black dog, in this case with Singer, as far as the colors that I'm using, I'm using, believe it or not, a lot of cerulean blue, white, and a little bit of black just to dull it down a bit. But cerulean seems to be the majority of the, of the blue color that I'm using here. Not my king's blue that you usually hear me touting about, but uh, the cerulean seems to be working for me here. And you're seeing it, I'm just, I'm still moving across his head, his, his top knot, and you can really kind of get an idea that that is indeed cerulean blue. And uh, yeah, so it's starting to, he's starting to have that little puffy, you know, poodly top knot, um, and it really does feel right. And I'm, I'm digging it. I'm actually now, just now starting to truly enjoy this piece. Even at this stage, I'm bringing his ear out a little bit more. And so, you know, I always have to be careful that I don't want to run everything off the, you know, the, the canvas. But you can see I just changed the size of his ear because I needed to. It wasn't right. And, or I'm actually widening his head, so I have to move the ear out, etc., etc. Okay, so I know I have at least one more day on this. And so I'm looking around. Of course, we see a lot of interesting colors, and you, you really aren't, familiar with that color your dog is till you actually have to paint them now again i've mentioned before singer is he looks like a black dog but he's actually considered a blue and which is interesting because i am using a ton of blue paint in this dog but you might do anyway with a black dog but uh yeah it seems like he's got an ex exceptional amount so a lot of the blues you see here so far have been mainly cerulean 
and with white and a little bit of brown and uh, king's blue and a little bit of ultramarine blue when I'm using the black. But I'm, I'm mixing ultramarine blue with a lot of Van Dyke brown to kind of get a, you know, not a flat black, but anyway, so one more day, we ought to be able to wrap this one up. All right, so we started out, you know, day three on the painting with a walk at 6 a.m. in the rain, folks. We got soaked. Singer looks happy about it. You know, he, he's unfazed. But for me, well, that's a different story. One, two. Yeah, we're soaked. Singer and I both, we walked not just a drizzle. We went through a soaking rain. <laughs> Didn't we, Singer? So he's going to require some major drying off when we get back to the house. I'm getting in the shower, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, but puddles are fun. After all, poodle means puddle and splash in German. So, you know, he was okay with the rain. He likes it. Don't you, Singer? Yeah, I wouldn't drink that water. That's quite gross. Come on. And we're back. This should be our last day on this piece. This has taken me eh, three days to do mainly because I've had a lot of students. This could have been perhaps done in a day and a half, but, and I don't think I'll have a full day on it today. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna start just kind of looking at where the little details need to be, um, you know, in his face. And I have, uh, I am able to zoom in a little bit and see where there's little hairs, because there's little, little hairs that kind of come over the top of his, his eye, I don't, want to, I don't want to obstruct his eye too very much. And I may actually, I'm gonna try it with this brush because it's a little bit, I don't want the values to be that different. And I'm just trying to, my paint's getting it. I didn't cover my paint. It's just been sitting here. So it's getting a little stiff, perhaps. I don't recommend that you not cover your paint, y'all. I'm just gonna bring a little, little bit of hair over the top of his eye. Because even though in the, in the photo reference it's a little bit more, I don't wanna obstruct his eye too much. I think it looks pretty. And I'm just gonna bring it here. And I'm just making little spots. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit for you so you can see what I'm doing here. Just putting little tiny, like at the, the tops of hairs. And it kinda of goes down with this little He's got another little. As if the hair's coming from someplace. We'll go ahead and put a little bit more of this dark values in here. And I'm, I'm being consistent with using my brush stroke going in the direction that the hair is actually falling. I think that's really important. Um, it almost creates a, you know, like you can actually have a sense of the direction. And so I have this hair falling over his eye, I'm going to lighten up just a little bit on the ends. And I can do that because the paint is already wet. So it's going to blend. It's just naturally going to blend. And I don't have to do a whole lot more than that. I want him to look, you know, natural. I don't want him to look Now, the hair is curly, he is a poodle. So, and after today, I'm getting stuck in the rain. Oh my goodness, it poured. And it wasn't just like a nice gentle sprinkle. No, no, it was pretty much a deluge and we got soaked. And he was so funny because he wanted to run. Now he saw some runners out on the road today when we were on our walk and he was like, look, ma, they're running. You know what? Let's go. Let's go home. Now, poodles are water dogs. 
And I'm thinking to myself, uh, excuse me, we're on our walk. I've got to get my, my exercise in too. And somebody's car horn is just, anyway. He was trying to run back and I'm like, dude, slow down. So I was afraid I was gonna fall. <laughs> it was slick, you know, it's raining. And I was, I'm, I'm kind of a chicken. You know, it's, it's one of those things, like I would, I used to be a runner, loved it. And when I ran, I loved running in the rain. I, d I did, because I just always stayed cooler. It was wonderful. Now that I'm kind of just walking, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't need to, I don't need to break a hip. So I don't need to run in the rain or walk fast in the rain. All right, so I'm just kind of highlighting some areas and uh, I'm trying to make it look a little bit, bit you know, he's got short hair. I keep his ear hair pretty short. And um, I don't want to make it look, it's a little fuller through here. I may have to bring that down a little bit. Let's bring that down. I don't want to make him look like he has like tiny ears because it does come down a little bit more. So we're gonna bring that down. So if this is, it kind of has a little angle here. And then it's just like a straight shot down. So we're just giving a little bit more substance to his ear. So I'm going in with a little bit of a darker value, just a slightly darker value. Now that the background paint is dry, there is no more loose or soft edges. Um, I could re-wet this, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm just going to just, I'm keeping, the, keeping my brush soft and when I say that, it means I'm not putting a lot of pressure on my brush. Um, you know, keeping, you know, the amount of pressure you put on the brush will affect your stroke quite a bit. And you know, that's one of the hardest things to teach my, you know, to teach a student. And that comes with experience. You know, I have always on my um, for my in-studio students, um, there's test boards behind their easels. And I always, you know, encourage them to try it out first on the test board, um, just to try different, how much pressure to put on the brush. And I think it helps. I'm going to, I've been using mainly King's Blue and White today so far, but I'm mixing a little bit of the Cerulean. The, you know, the photo reference that I took of Singer in this picture, he was by our patio door. So he's getting a lot of natural light. So that's why, you know, he's <laughs> when you're photographing a black dog, you may want to consider the lighting. Um, you know, you've seen a lot of little videos of Singer today on this video. And so you kind of have the idea that, you know, he, well, he looks like a black dog, but when he shines, he shines blue. And if you don't take the photograph in good light, you're gonna, it's really hard to paint a solid black dog, <laughs> right? So you gotta, you gotta get something to work with. And that's what I'm doing, you know, that's why this photograph was a good one. Now, for those interested, I will be teaching a workshop January 14th and 15th, I think, in, uh, in Cartersville, Georgia, at the Booth Museum. So, and it will be on pet portraits. So if you'd like to join us, please check out their um, I'll go ahead and leave a link to, to the museum. And you can uh, check them out and sign up for that workshop if you're interested. I'd love to see you guys. I already know a lot of my students from here are planning on going. So they're limiting the, uh, the capacity to I think 15 people. Um, I'd love to have a sold out, a sold out workshop. So, you know, be sure to check that out if you're interested. All right, I'm trying to pull a little bit more cadmium. I mean, sorry, cadmium, listen to me. Cerulean. 
into that ear. Mm, so I have to quite run away. I want to make a little bit of a shade. I'm adding a little bit. It's really, I'm toning. It's more of a tone because it's, it's already have white in it, but I'm adding a little bit of black to my, uh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Even though I keep his ears pretty close, there's still, you can still see the little bit of the short hair that's here. A little bit of that curl, you know, and even in his ears. So I'm kind of going with the direction that the hair creates here. So if it goes like this, if it looks like little S's, we're gonna do little S's. And I can actually go in with a little bit of white on top, like I'm highlighting the hump of the curl. I'm not gonna go crazy here, folks, with this. Um, but I do like, you know, try to stay true to form here. And that's looking pretty good. It kind of goes up here. So I'm just following, I'm looking at my reference. I keep my eye right on the reference. I mean, I'm still trying to keep that quarter inch on that side, yo. I mean, I pulled this one off a little too close. Um, and you saw how I oftentimes morph. A lot of that, and I say by morphing, I mean how my, you know, the structure changes throughout the, the process of the painting. And to avoid that sort of thing, if, you, if, you're, if you've got an issue with it, I kind of like doing it that way. But this was a commission. I probably would have made sure I had a really solid, you know, drawing first instead of that loose, uh, loose charcoal sketch. I would make sure that I knew all my um, proportions were correct and exact so that I don't go, you know, I what if I ran this ear completely off? That would have been wrong. So, you know, you can always, there's all kinds of tools and things you can do to prevent that from happening. You know, some people actually, um, you know, I'm just taking a little bit of white because I already know the paint is wet. So I'm just kind of hitting just the sides, a little bit of the hair. And like I said, I had mentioned before, I am not a professional groomer. <laughs> That's why there's good people who know how to do this, that do this for you. But I like to keep my dog's hair short between groomings and yeah, so that's why his hair is, you know, a little bit not, not exactly like, you know, professional. But, um, but what I was going to say was a lot of folks, professional artists, um, will actually trace on a completed drawing onto their um, canvas or substrate prior to their painting. And a lot of, I've had other people say, well, is that wrong? No, it's not wrong. Most professional artists know how to draw. Um, so it's not like a question of whether they're um, cheating. It just means they're using that as just a tool to make sure they get it down onto their, to their canvas properly or the substrate properly. Um, now, if, so, okay, for example, in my studio, I don't have my students do that because they're learning. They're here because they want to learn how to paint. And for me, you know, I even recommend that all of my students learn, you know, keep a sketchbook, learn how to draw. All right, I need to make this a little bit bigger than what I have in the picture, so we're doing this again. And there's a little bit here. It goes down like this. But there's so many different ways to make sure that you keep your um, your uh, drawing precise. Right, he's got a nice little. You know, looking at, you know, you start to really appreciate your dog's structure. And he's got another little, 
here. It goes into that, so that makes sense. It's almost like little folds. It's funny when he's, yeah, whether he's laughing or is anxious or happy, he, he gets a face, he gets a fold in here. And when you talk about a dog having a relaxed face, they usually have a very, um, what's the word? Um, they don't have a lot of folds showing in their face. They have a, a more slacked face. but you do start to really appreciate your dog's structure. And I probably should just expedite this for you because I know that after a while it gets you listening to me drone on like this. Basically, folks, I'm just tying up loose ends, putting highlights where they need to go. I finally feel, felt like I got the nose worked out. You know, for some reason I struggled with this nose, but I got it. And I'm moving around the piece and just putting in the highlights, really, because I'm about to wrap this sucker up. And I am loving Singer's Portrait. and I wanted you to be able to appreciate the eye. Because they have very dark eyes, I did want to catch the reflection and you can kind of see the window pane, if you will, in the wind, in the eye. And you know, he does have such funny expressive eyes. He, he is such a funny dog. He has a great sense of humor too. He's goofy. All right, I am finished. I am done with Singer's portrait. I'm pretty c content with this. It looks like my boy. Yeah, except right now he's a curly mess because we got stuck in the rain. But you know, this is after his, <laughs> I took the photo reference right after I gave him a haircut and a bath. So he was looking pretty sharp. But yeah, that's my boy, that's Singer. So again, I, if you've got any questions about anything you saw on today's video, please don't hesitate to contact me. Just leave it in the comment section. I'll be glad to get to that for you. I'm just kind of giving you the once over here. Um, I'll let you see a little bit close up. Yeah, I used a lot of cerulean blue and um, mixture of colors. And it's funny because here he does really look blue and he did in the photo reference. And I'll go ahead and give you a side by side here. You can see he does have a lot of blue in the side by side reference. It's funny, I can look at that. I'm holding the camera this way because that's but if I change the angle that I hold the camera, I can shorten his nose or uh, it looks a little different. But anyway, there you have it. That's Singer's Portrait. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. It means a lot. Leave me a comment. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. 
and uh, I look forward to the next video. See ya. And here it is. I like how he turned out. I think, you know what, that's my boy. I can see him and what's interesting is, you know, obviously when you're painting a black dog, it does have its challenges, right? There's <laughs> just a lot of black. But you know what, when you have them in the right light, they will highlight out and you can see, you know, obviously the, the light is coming from this, this side and it's hitting him on that side of his face. And you can, you can actually see, you can see his eyes, you can see all his features. And so there, yeah, there you have it. So if you have any questions about anything you saw on today's video, please leave it in the comments section. I'll get to you, I promise. And uh, if you're my subscribers, thanks so much. And if you're not, boop, right there, they hit the owl and subscribe, ring that bell. You'll know when the next video comes out. And if you like hmm, more real time, uh, a little bit more detailed types of painting tutorials, please check out my Patreon channel. And uh, yeah, so thanks for joining me. And from Kingsport, Tennessee, I wanna say thanks. Bye.